seven diaries I recorded that year, there was a common theme. I would often hear an innocent and valid point that a men's rights activist would make, but in my head, I would add on to their statement a sexist or anti-woman spin, assuming that's what they wanted to say but didn't. So here are two examples of how that would go. A men's rights activist in MRA would say to me, there are over 2,000 domestic violence shelters for women in the United States, but only one for men. Yet multiple reputable studies show that men are just as likely to be abused. I would hear them say, we don't need 2,000 shelters for women. They're all lying about being abused. It's all a scam. But in looking back on all the footage I'd gathered of men's rights activists talking about shelters, and all the blogs they've written, and the video live streams they posted on YouTube, they're not trying to defund women's shelters, not at all. All they're saying is that men can be abused too, and they deserve care and compassion. Second example, a men's rights activist would say to me, where is justice for the man who was falsely accused of raping a woman? And because of this accusation, he loses his college scholarship and is branded with the inescapable title of rapist. I would hear them say, a woman being raped isn't a big deal. It's as if I didn't hear the word falsely accused of rape. All I heard was he was accused of rape. Of course, rape is a big deal, and all the men's rights activists I met agreed it is a horrible thing to have happened to anyone. I eventually realized what they're saying is they're trying to add to the gender equality discussion who is standing up for the good-hearted, honorable man that loses his scholarship, his job, or worse yet, his children, because he's accused of something he absolutely did not do. Well, I couldn't keep denying the points they were making. There are real issues. But in my effort to avoid agreeing with my enemy completely, I changed from putting words in their mouth to acknowledging the issue, but insisting they are women's issues. So here are two examples of how that would go. A men's rights activist would say to me, Men are far more likely to lose their child in a custody battle. And I would counter, well, because women are unfairly expected to be the caretaker, it's discrimination against women that women get custody more often. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not proud of that. <laughs> Second example, an MRA would say to me, Men are roughly 78% of all suicides throughout the world. And I would counter with, but women attempt suicide more often. So, ha. Huh? <laughs> ha. Huh? It's not a contest, but I kept making it into one. Why couldn't I simply learn about men's issues and have compassion for male victims without jumping at the opportunity to insist that women are the real victims. Well, after years of researching and fact-checking what the men's rights activists were telling me, there is no denying that there are many human rights issues that uniquely or disproportionately affect men. Paternity fraud uniquely affects men. The United States Selective Service, in the case of a draft, still uniquely affects men. Workplace deaths, disproportionately men. War deaths, overwhelmingly men. Suicide, overwhelmingly men. Sentencing disparity, life expectancy, child custody, child support, false rape allegations, criminal court bias, misandry, failure to launch, boys falling behind in education, homelessness, veterans issues, infant male gen genital mutilation, lack of parental choice once a child is conceived, lack of resources for male victims of domestic violence. So many issues that are heartbreaking if you are the victim 
or you love someone who is the victim of any one of these issues. These are men's issues, and most people can't name one because they think, well, men have all the rights, they have all the power and privilege. But these issues deserve to be acknowledged, they deserve care, attention, and motivation for solutions. Before making the Red Pill movie, I was a feminist of about 10 years, and I thought I was well-versed on gender equality issues. But it wasn't until I met men's rights activists that I finally started to consider the other side of the gender equality 